a wireless earbud for one of my other projects i'm looking for few small batteries and what i have realized is that it's much more convenient to take them out of a el cheapo aliexpress earbud than buying them separately today we are going to tear down one of those earbuds and through that process we'll try to learn about the electronics design of this kind of earbud so without further delay let's get started This is the PCB port of the earbud enclosure. The most important part of this board is the battery charge management IC. Sadly, I couldn't locate the datasheet of the chip online, but I think that we can still figure out the operating principle of this IC. Anyway, for me, the most interesting part of this board is the Poco pins. They create a temporary connection with the earbud to charge their internal battery. Other than that, it has a status button, status LEDs, few passive components and the micro B connector and obviously we have the battery connected to the board. Now let's move on to the circuit diagram. So this is our circuit diagram and from the diagram we can see that pin 1 is connected to a switch and the other pin of the switch is connected to ground. So definitely our pin 1 is actually pulled up to VDD through a pull up register. And when we press the switch, we actually pull down the pin 1 to ground. And by doing so, we actually activate the status section of the chip. And based on the battery capacity and the USB connection status, our LDs will indicate different situations. For example, if pin 8 and pin 7 is high and pin 6 is low, then this LED and this LED will turn on and the other two will remain off. There is no physical pin 9, but underneath the chip, we have a pad, and that pad is actually acting as the ground of this IC. And then, if we look at pin 2, we can obviously see that it's connected to the USB connection, and from there, our chip is getting the power, through which is powering up the status LED, as well as charging the earbuds and the battery. So, till now, the operation of pin 1, pin 2, Pin 6, 7, 8, and 9 are quite clear, but as we do not have any access to the datasheet of this chip, it becomes a bit difficult to explain how pin 3, 4, and 5 is operating. So, before jumping into any kind of conclusion, let's just go through a few reference design, and from there we can guess some of the operation of these three pins. So this is our first reference design. I have selected three of them and none of them are selected in any particular order. Here we have our input section. From there, the power propagates through few switching devices, through the inductor to our load. And some of the power from that point is also being transferred through another switching device to our battery. And if we remove our USB connection, then actually the battery will take over from here. It will power up the whole circuit as well as it will deliver the power to our load if needed. We can see that there is a one pin called I set through which we can select the constant current mode uh, current limit. As we all know that when you are charging the battery, we have few different charge mode. We might have a trickle charge mode, then constant current mode, constant voltage mode. And some other manufacturer may have some other different kind of charging method. We can also see that we have a NTC connection here. So if our battery has an internal thermostat, we can connect it here. In that way, the chip will also monitor the battery's internal temperature. And I think it will also try to regulate the charging method based on the battery temperature. Now let's move on to our second reference design. Our second design is quite similar to our first design. On the left side, we can see our input sections. For this configuration, let's consider we are getting our power from our external USB device. So our power will propagate through a couple of switching devices through the inductor to our load. 
in this case obviously our load would be the air bird and from the same point some of the power will travel through another switching device to our battery and similarly when we will disconnect the usb device based on what amount of power we have in our load the battery will actually transfer power through the same line to our load as well as it will try to operate the whole operation of the ic to monitor the battery status of the load just like our previous design we need some kind of circuitry to monitor the battery status so the circuit will be here somewhere through which we will measure the battery capacity and also we will monitor the charge current we also have a thermostat option or thermocouple option here through which we can monitor the internal temperature of the battery just like our previous two designs we can see that we have our input section on the left side from there the power is propagating through a couple of switching devices to our air bud. and unlike our previous two designs we can see that some of the power is actually internally supplied through a couple of switching devices through our inductor through our register to our battery just like our previous two designs we can monitor our battery temperature as well as we can monitor the battery charge current and the voltage if we move on to our discharge section we will be able to see that the power is being transferred through the switching circuit to our load as we now have a better understanding of this kind of circuitry let's move on to our actual design and try to figure out how that chip is actually working so in my opinion this ic has three different switching circuits the power travels through pin 2 through switching circuit 1 then from there some of the power goes through the switching circuit 2 through pin 3 to our air buds and the rest of the power travels through switching circuit 3 through pin 4 to the inductor to our battery i think pin 5 is being used to monitor the battery capacity and the battery status and r2 is being used to set the current limit for the constant current charge mode and when somebody disconnects the USB connection, the power travels from the battery through the inductor, through switching circuit 3, switching circuit 2, to our earbuds. And that was my opinion based on the other reference design. If any of you have the data sheet or know how this circuit is actually operating, then please share with us in the comment section below. In the second part of this video, we will look into the electronic design of the actual earbud. If you are interested then stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one.